The question we're going to investigate today is why is water the universal solvent? How does water dissolve substances? The first thing we need to do is take a look at one of our water molecules. You notice that it's two parts hydrogen to one part oxygen. Uh, these, these three atoms are actually sharing electrons, so this is going to be a covalent bond. Now, um, we know that they're sharing because they're two nonmetals. So nonmetals are sharing electrons. Okay, so we have the sharing going on, but this isn't your typical sharing. Um, this is going to be an uneven sharing, uneven sharing of electrons because oxygen has a higher electronegativity. And electronegativity is the tendency for an atom to actually pull electrons off of another atom. And oxygen has a pretty high electronegativity. So it wants to essentially pull off um, hydrogens, both of these hydrogens. It wants to pull off um, their electrons. But hydrogen won't let the oxygen totally pull off its electrons. What ends up happening is you end up having an uneven pulling um, of electrons. So that you end up getting hydrogen with a positive charge because it's almost losing its electrons and oxygen actually almost gaining those electrons from hydrogen. Uh, so you get an uneven pulling which is going to result with a slight charge, a slight charge. And we're going to change the name of our bond now. It's not just a covalent bond, but it's called a polar covalent bond. Polar meaning slight charge, uneven pulling. So how does this help um, water uh, dissolve substances? Well, you need to look a little bit closer into my water glass. There are tons of water molecules in this glass of water. <clears throat> so we're just going to throw a bunch of water molecules in here. That's good for now. And if we dissolve something like, let's say, table salt, we're going to have a couple of um, uh, compounds of NaCl in our water glass. All right, we'll put one more down here. All right, you notice that the NaCl, the Cl is going to be a little bit bigger. It is a um, slightly bigger atom. Um, it has a high electronegativity, so it wants that electron from sodium. Sodium will give the electron to chlorine. That's what makes this an ionic bond, um, because sodium will actually transfer its electron to chlorine, making sodium a positive ion, while chlorine will become a negative ion. So all of these sodium and chlorides, uh, sodium and chlorine, have charges. These are ionic bonds. Uh, they have an electro, it's called an electrostatic attraction. Electrostatic attraction is what keeps that sodium and chlorine together. So sodium and chlorine are, is an, that's an ionic bond and water that's floating around in here is covalent. Now, the reason why water is a universal solvent has to do with that polar covalent bond that we talked about before. Um, if you notice, my water has a bunch of C NaCl's and a bunch of water molecules. These water molecules that kind of look like Mickey Mouse's are going to orientate themselves based on what side of the ionic bond they are located. Um, so I'm going to take this uh, water molecule and I'm actually going to rotate it because if you remember my oxygen side was negative and all of my salt has a positive and negative side so my water molecules are actually going to orientate themselves to where the opposite charge is so my hydrogens are positively charged they're going to be attracted to the chlorine that's negatively charged this water molecule is going to come up it's going to rotate itself because the hydrogens have a positive charge and they're going to get closer to that that sodium. I put a couple more uh, water molecules in here. You notice that they rotate themselves and they're going to get close to the sodium. The oxygen is going to get close because it's a negative and sodium is a positive. This water molecule right here will orientate itself. The hydrogens will again get closer to chlorine. Now, if I advance our page, add a new page, we're going to draw this again. So we have our oxygens that are negatively charged. We have our hydrogens that are having a slight positive charge. I'm going to draw another one here. Okay, and then we're going to have our sodium chloride. So here's my sodium. 
here's my chlorine. And then I'm going to draw some more water molecules. You notice that I rotated them. So what ends up happening is the electrostatic charge which keeps Na and Cl together, also has an effect with the water molecule. The negative side of the oxygen will be attracted to the sodium uh, that's positively charged. And what ends up happening is that oxygen will try to pull that sodium away from the chlorine. So it pulls it away that way. Uh, the hydrogens will actually pull the chlorines away that way. So you have them being pulled uh, both in opposite directions and it's all based on the charge. So water, you look at water, you say it's covalent, but it's, it's, it's unique, it's special. It's called polar covalent, which means it has a slight charge and it's able to pull these um, compounds apart because of the charge. I hope this helped uh, explain why water is a universal solvent. It has to do with its polar covalent bond um, and it works when um, you have likes, so you have ionic bond that has charges, um, likes dissolve in likes. So if you put something like an oil or a lipid, that's the classification of oils, those are nonpolar, so they're not going to have a charge at all. Water's not going to be able to pull them apart. Water's only going to be able to pull apart a uh, compound if it has that slight charge to it so the opposites can attract. Um, I hope this helped clarify why water's universal solvent, why it's called polar covalent. Um, thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to seeing you in class.